Uh, the other day, as I was preparing for this presentation, I heard somebody describe scientists as just a bunch of big kids that never really grew up because we've never lost our sense of curiosity and we just need to know stuff. You know, we just want to know stuff. But the fun part about science, the fun part about being a biologist and what I do, is that there's always something more to learn. And so what I'm really excited to share with you today is something very new that I have learned. Um, it's brand new research that you guys will actually be the first people in the whole world to hear about. And it has to do with kind of a new way to think about emperor penguins. Like I said, we know a lot about them, but this is kind of a, a new take on how we think about them. So emperor penguins are actually the only penguins that never come on land. They're always either foraging in the ocean or they breed on the sea ice. So what you're looking at here is the Antarctic continent with the winter sea ice extent around it. And you can see it's very vast. As the weather gets very cold, the sea ice expands. And so what that means is that emperor penguins have to deal with that. They have a habitat that is constantly changing. But one of the fun things I think about emperor penguins is that nearly everything we know about them comes from just one colony. And that's actually where the movie March of the Penguins was, was filmed. So we know a lot about this colony. Now, emperor penguins, if you've seen March of the Penguins, you realize that they are impossible to differentiate, right? They all look exactly the same. So they'll put a band on the upper part of their flipper, it doesn't hurt them at all, um, with an ID tag, and that allows researchers to understand who comes back every single year. You breed, you go out and forage in the summertime into the winter, and you come back to the same location. And if you don't come back, you're assumed to be dead. So if I'm an emperor penguin and I decide that I want to go somewhere else, I probably would die, because if you've seen March of the Penguins, uh, you know that they have to huddle together in the wintertime to stay warm. But, as I mentioned, science builds on science, and it's so incredibly fun um, to use a new technology, kind of a new tool, to find something completely unexpected. And that's what's happened just recently. So satellites are, are orbiting the Earth all the time. But there's a difference between the images that we had previously gotten and the ones that we can get now. On this side, we have the Antarctic continent. The reason I point that out is because even though it's white, there's land under there. And the rest of the picture is sea ice and grounded icebergs. And if you can see that brown stain in the middle of the picture, that is an emperor penguin colony because they poop. And I can see it on these satellite images. And so that's how I can tell that there's a colony at any given location. So as I was looking at some images about a year ago, I found actually a new colony of emperor penguins, which is that blue star up there. So again, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for that brown stain on the sea ice. And it turns out that in just the course of about four years, just by looking at the images, I found six instances where colonies were blinking in and out. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. And so this suggests that they are potentially moving from place to place. The other thing that I found was something a bit more about their biogeography in general. By looking at the high-resolution imagery, my colleagues and I found an additional 24 colonies, and it turns out that point geology is not isolated like we once thought it was. Those two blue dots right next to it are newly discovered colonies that we found just by looking at the imagery. And so what that suggests to me is that perhaps they did have a new place to go. So because of that, I don't think that emperor penguins are always philopatric. I think that they can be. Um, I think when times get tough, though, I think they have the ability to move. If they are moving around, and maybe they're moving around more frequently, we really need to understand why they're moving. Is it because their habitat's leaving? Or is it because we're fishing in the area and we're taking away their prey? Those two things, among several others, are really important to understand if we want to have an understanding about how we have an impact on these guys. And I think we just, we can always learn more. Thank you.